uh, there, there is a there is a whole set of new trade theories, which which are which are which are uh, consistent with the fact that globalization increases inequality, <clears throat> and and uh, one of them is 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 a fact that that uh, that uh, if you have technologically advanced intermediate goods, it can increase inequality. It's going to be skilled labor biased. So in a country like India, when capital comes in or or when when capital intensive intermediate goods are imported, it benefits not the whole population not the unskilled not the medium skilled but the very skilled so so trade has undoubtedly caused a huge amount of inequality in india i'm sure that that's true of china when the data come out and 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 in general uh, trade over the last 20 years uh, has been of the nature that it's going to increase inequality mnes firm based trade these are all skill labor biased or capital biased and 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 uh, they, they 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 they're just going to increase inequality um, the trade in task model, uh, which is which has just uh, you know recently emerged as a as an alternative paradigm, Grossman and Hansberg Rossi, Rossi's model, uh, the the the, the uh, it also produces inequality as a result. I mean, there is there is some some certain saving graces in terms of that kind of trade not causing inequality, but as a rule, uh, trade in tasks will increase inequality. So what's the connection between inequality and regime change? And I'll I'll just I'll just verbally lay it out. It's a, it's in the Achimoglu Robinson book, and 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 I'm sure it's familiar to to most of you here. Uh, so 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 the, the 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 connection between inequality and regime change. The idea goes as follows. Okay. So in democracies, democracies are more redistributive. The the, the poor impose higher taxes on the rich. Uh, higher taxes than in non-democracy. So obviously, the poor are pro-democracy. Uh, the rich and elite have, have an incentive to oppose it. In non-democracies, the poor are excluded from political power, but they pose a revolutionary threat. Therefore, the elite redistribute income to prevent redistribution. Temporarily, at least. Okay, this, this redistribution is not guaranteed into the future, and if this redistribution is insufficient to prevent future revolutions, then there must be some credible commitment by the elite, and this credible commitment comes in the in the in the in the form of regime change. For example, voting rights. Okay. However, the regime change itself is not permanent, since the elite have the power and incentive to take power by coup. And to prevent this, the poor will have to agree to commit to a low level of future taxation. But this commitment is not necessarily credible. And when taxes are high, coups are more likely. And 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 and, and the theoretical mo there, there is a, there is a tradition in the theory in the in this area which shows that optimal taxes are high when inequality is high, and therefore unequal societies, uh, unequal countries fluctuate in and out of democracy. It's not it's not. Uh, it's not it's not a stable uh, environment for regimes that in a nutshell is there is there is a, is a is a theory and we want to shed light on this what we want to do uh, and and now, now we are uh, let me let me explain the data that we use over here yeah question so I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to say. I'd like to say. Ho hold. Hold that question uh, till you. Till you see the setup. Because I think when you have fixed effects in it, it takes. It takes some of those concerns away, but not all of them. Size matters definitely. But then most of our results are driven by within India variation, within China variation. It's not a cross section. Okay. Yes. 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 So, 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 so you're talking about the 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 the, uh, the kind of the kind of control variables that you want in this setting, and uh, let's 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 see let's see if if I have the control variables to satisfy your your concerns. Okay. Right. So, so there are there are 
there are four measures of, of uh, democracy that we use. Uh, all of them uh, in, this, in this unified democracy scores project, uh, the University of Illinois, it's on their website, uh, and by, by, by Pemstein, Meserve, and Melton. And it's, it's basically, I'm, I, I don't want to go into the details of that method because that will take me another 10 minutes to explain, but, but it's, 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 uh, it's legit uh, in, 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 the, in the sense that I've done a, a, a number of robustness studies uh, comparing the native score to what these guys have done in terms of uh, uh, you know standardizing these scores etc so so they use a bayesian methodology and uh, from from the from, uh, they 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 they, they uh, compute uh, they, they actually draw democracy scores from a posterior distribution and uh, there, there is uh, what what our results are are uh, so so they produced a thousand scores across a hundred something countries for each of these measures each of these different measures and so we take the mean across those thousand as our dependent variable we, we've done a number of robustness stuff but uh, but uh, one of the w one of the important and and, and interesting uh, uh, value added from this exercise is as follows we have a unified democracy score, which kind of aggregates across 10 different measures of democracy. So back to Alessandra's question, is there a specific kind of democracy I have in mind? It's, 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 it's kind of an aggregate. Okay. It, 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 it measures many dimensions of democracy, political rights, civil liberties, uh, a lot of things. Uh, that's the unified democracy score. Uh, the biggest selling point of the unified democracy score is as follows. If you believe that each of these individual uh, scores is measured with error, the concept of democracy is clear in your mind, but the measure is very imperfect. So there's measurement error. And if that's the only source of error, then, then this methodology is 100% justified because aggregating across, uh, across different scores with, with uh, uh, uncorrelated measurement error gives you efficiency gains. So the, 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 the unified democracy scores are uh, uh, um, less, uh, less prone to, to, to measurement error uh, than each of these individual scores. <clears throat> of course, each of these individual scores emphasizes different dimensions of democracy. And another important advantage of, their, uh, of, of, of the PMM method is that we can compare across each of these three different scores because they are standardized. They are standardized to the UDS scores. Okay, so so uh, the three most popular measures of uh, democracy scores in the literature have been uh, the Polity 4 score by Marshall, Jaggers, and Gurr, uh, the Freedom House scores augmented by Bolin before 1970, so we call that the Bolin Freedom House scores, and, and the Prijowski et al. scores, uh, the, which we call PACL, uh, which, which, uh, which, which comes closest to trying to understand regime change because it's meant to be a binary measure and it focuses on the contestability of elections. So, so if, you, if, if you have in your mind uh, your measure of democracy as the contestability, uh, as, as a measure of contestability, then your best bet is to go with the results uh, uh, using PACL as, the, as a dependent variable. If you have civil rights in mind, then, uh, then it's then it's, uh, it's it's freedom house. If you have political rights specifically in mind, then it's then it's polity. <clears throat>